Are we able in our lifetime to hear an address of appreciation for us while we live? Our families usually hear this stuff when we die. From the opening gates of our coming to the closing gates of our going, life forces us to deal with mountains. Mountains tall, impressive, imposing will always stand before us. Some mountains have to be left, some mountains have to be climbed, some mountains ought to be moved. But one thing for sure is that mountains cannot be ignored. The heart-touching, mind-boggling, growth-spurring question of the hour is what does a mature Christian do with his mountain? I borrow a phrase from the vocabulary of my preaching colleague and a choice ministerial student of Dr. Maxwell, that preaching giant from Rochester, New York, Minister William Jones, has a phrase I borrow for this occasion. Jones says, it takes a mountain of a man to manhandle a mountain. <laughs> like Caleb of the Old Testament, so is Dr. James Maxwell. He is a man-handling mountaineer. Caleb wholly followed the Lord. Those of us who have known Dr. Maxwell, those of us who have come to love him across these 40 plus years, recognize like Caleb that he is a great and a noble servant of the Lord. Amen. If there were a trophy to be given to the most humble servant in the kingdom of God, I think Dr. Maxwell would probably get the award. Amen. Amen. One of God's greatest servants. Yes, yes. And to have spent 46 years in the second chapter, <laughs> not trying to override the man in the first chapter, Amen. requires a very special spirit and a very special attitude. Amen. So for riding in a second chariot for 46 years, Dr. Maxwell, we give you a love. He is a man who, is, who wholly followed the Lord. I think about the instructions of his devotion. He was wholly devoted to the Lord. That's what Moses said about Caleb. He, he was wholly devoted to the Lord. Look at the instructions of that devotion. The term holy is meant to convey that there was nothing casual about Caleb's commitment. His heart was fixed, his mind was made up, there was nothing of the half-hearted, half-stepping, half-measures that most of us who have members of the church who claim to be faithful members are about. We, we'd love to have a few more people who are wholly dedicated to the Lord. Amen. See, that word holy is the word melee in Hebrew, and it carries the idea of having the hands full. Oh, you missed it. <laughs> See, when your hands are full, you ain't got room for nothing else. <laughs> so if your hands are full of the Lord, you don't have room for anything else. You know, those people who claim to be for Southwestern, with Southwestern, been with you all the time, you know, the ones who want peace without Christ and they want blessings without behaving, they want salvation without sacrifice, they want rewards without righteousness, they want unity without humility, they want praise without precepts, singing without soul winning, Christ without the church, deliverance, 
without dedication, favor without faithfulness, glory without godliness, joy without judgment, knowledge without study. They won't over to be an overcomer without obedience, over half stepping, not wholly given to the Lord. And Dr. Maxwell has set a new style of commitment in the kingdom of God for ministers. If ministers don't learn how to be wholly devoted to the Lord, how can we lead other folk to be faithful? That's the instruction of his devotion. But the impact of his direction, the reason some folk are not really devoted to God is because they have their hands full with too many worldly things. Mm -hmm. well. Too much worldly stuff. All right. As we follow this man across the years, he's been a faithful servant of God. Amen. He's been a great preacher, but he's been a good man. Amen. Because I don't believe, and, and, and I, I learned that from him as a student, you can never be a great preacher until you are first a great person. Amen. He's modeled that all of his life. If you can say nothing else about Dr. Maxwell, you would have to say he's a good man who wholly follows the Lord. And the impact of that is that he has trained hundreds of young men in his 40-year history to do the same. The idea of following suggests going in a certain direction. And if all of us, my ministry and all those I impact, if we could just get half of Dr. Maxwell's spirit, right. the brotherhood would be a safe place to be for the next 50 years. Amen. Because after all, he's been faithful to his calling, he's been loyal to his wife, committed to his family, respected by his peers, mm -hmm. admired by students, loved by his community, humble in spirit, cooperative in nature, consistent in integrity, mature in judgment, sound in doctrine, and all of the devils in hell know that he's a sound, serious, sincere, stick to the book, gospel preacher and ministry director. He has a mind and he knows it. He has a will and he shows it. He sees his way and he goes it. He draws a line and he tolls it. He has a chance and he takes it. A friendly hand and shakes it. A rule that never breaks it. If there's no time, he makes it. He loves the truth, stand by it. Never ever tries to shy it, whoever may deny it or openly defy it. He hears a lie and he slays it. He owes a debt and he pays it. And as I have heard him praise it, he knows the game and he plays it. We love you. We honor you. Dr. James O. Maxwell.